There are three orcas in Moscow. How they got there and where they came from is shrouded in secrecy and raises many questions. Russian billionaire Goldnisanov said in an interview in February 2013 that he intended to build Europe's largest oceanarium and dolphinarium in the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow. The construction of the oceanarium began in 2013 and it is still in progress. Nisanov also stated that a killer whale and a beluga whale had already been captured in the far east of Russia for this dolphinarium and that a contract for the delivery of 17 dolphins from Japan had been signed. Nisanov is no doubt aware that every year many hundreds of dolphins are massacred in Taiji. The pretty or cute ones among them are separated and sold into the captivity industry. The rest of the dolphins are slaughtered for meat pet food and fertilizer. Buying dolphins from Japan, as does buying a ticket to a dolphin show, fuels the demand for more dolphins to be captured. The orca, mentioned by the owner of the Oceanarium at the All-Russian Exhibition Center, was caught by Sochinsky Dolphinary in August 2012 in the Sea of Okotsk off Russia's east coast. She was a five-year-old female, in human terms, like a five-year-old girl. In the wild, orcas live in family pods for their entire lives with a life expectancy of 60 to 90 years, just like humans. During her capture, one or two of her family members were killed. She was named Narnia and kept in a sea pen in the Pacific Research Fisheries Center near the city of Nakodka. Narnia was the first orca to survive out of several live capture attempts in Russia and unlike other orcas, didn't die during transport and adaptation. Information about the first live orca captured by Russians in the Russian Far East was leaked on the internet. French activist Amélie Laurent started a Free Narnia the Orca petition addressed to President Putin. A year after the capture of Narnia, Sochinsky Delfinari captured three more young orcas in the Sea of Okotsk. One of them was later named Nord, and again, according to local fishermen, one or two orcas died during the capture. Official statistics of orca death are not kept in Russia, and outsiders are not allowed to observe captures. The orcas were transported by truck to the Pacific Research Fishery Center near Nakodka within a week and placed in a sea pen with Narnia, who had spent the year in solitary confinement. All three orcas arrived in very bad condition and refused to eat. Trainers couldn't do anything, but Narnia helped. She put fish into the new orca's mouths and eventually they began to eat. These orcas are transients, so they normally feed only on marine mammals in the wild, usually seals. We can only imagine what kind of hell these orcas endured to start eating dead fish instead of the nutrition they are accustomed to in the wild. What was planned for these four orcas in their tiny sea pen is unknown, but Elena Krilova, a spokesman for the Nukovo airport, wrote a tweet about the transport of two killer whales to Sochi in November 2013. It was obvious that these orcas were intended to be displayed at the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympic Games to impress the world. This news spread rapidly on social networks and sparked an international outcry. The world was not impressed by this idea. Instead, people were angry. Probably Russian officials realized how damaging it would be and, as a result, the orcas did not go to Sochi. The two whales, Narnia and Nord, were transported to Moscow in top secrecy on December 2nd, 2013. About a month before that, two rusty tanks at the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow were covered with an inflatable structure, and the facility was leased to Sachinsky Delfinari, the company that captured the orcas off Russia's east coast. Rumors began circulating about the sound of animals crying and splashing water emitting from the mysterious hangar at the Exhibition Center. Russian journalist Alex Steinert approached the management of the Exhibition Center inquiring about the purpose of the tanks. The response from the center in February 2014 
stated that the temporary structure was for technical purposes. Activists had struggled for 10 months to discover the truth about the heavily guarded facility at the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow. You really don't know what is in this facility? No, I don't know. Did you see any orcas being transported here? Orcas? No. Do you know what is in this inflatable structure? Construction supplies for the repair of the facility. Construction supplies are making weird noises like marine mammals? Well, that I can't say. Finally, at the request of the Vita Animal Rights Organization, Moscow City Police confirmed that indeed killer whales were being held in the temporary facilities. Indeed, there are orcas placed in that facility. Police declined to initiate a criminal case, saying everything inside looked all right. The police report said that all necessary documents were in order. The orcas were being kept in carefully maintained conditions with a diet consisting of 12 species of fish in excellent filtered water under the supervision of seven veterinarians and five trainers. If everything there is really all right, why was it carefully hidden for 10 months? After weeks of silence, the exhibition center, deputy general director, admitted that they held orcas in their territory in the most comfortable conditions, in two temporary tanks, 82 feet in diameter and 26 feet deep, with a water capacity of about 8,000 cubic meters. The dimensions of the orcas, 18 feet and 15 feet. Killer whales are in ideal conditions in terms of health care, in terms of nutrition. Not one journalist, animal advocate, or orca expert has been allowed to personally examine these most comfortable conditions where the animals have languished for a year. The only source of information is the all-Russian exhibition center management, and it is difficult to discern when or if they are telling the truth. With all the attention being paid to the orcas in the fall of 2014, encouraged by the Vita Animal Rights Center, more people in Russia and around the world have learned about these Moscow orcas and have joined the struggle for the freedom of these animals. Many publications, discussions and stories about these killer whales appeared on the internet and in the press. Several online petitions have been started. Your protest is not authorized. Please go away. The activists of the campaign, Free the Prisoners of the Exhibition Center in November 2014, protested the capture and secret of 11-month captivity of two orcas in cramped, rusty tanks. Despite the peaceful nature of this event and the concept of freedom of speech, two activists were arrested. The Russian Department of Natural Resources said in response to the Big Hearts Animal Advocacy Organization that there was no violation in the treatment of orcas in the exhibition center because there are no laws in Russia protecting captive animals. So here we are in 2015 and the Russian Federation has no laws protecting animals. This essentially means that anybody can kidnap or buy dolphins, beluga whales or orcas and hold them anywhere they please. A third young orca was delivered to the All-Russia Exhibition Center from the Russian East Coast in December 2014. Malishka, which means baby girl in Russia, was caught in the late summer of 2014. Her estimated age was four years, and trainers said her stage name would be Juliet. In December 2014, the family of orcas was finally moved to one of the world's biggest oceanariums, construction of which will soon be completed in Moscow. The orcas have acquired a new accommodation, a huge pool with special lighting so they might feel at home. You can't record them with bright light yet, they're still acclimating to working in public. The orcas, brought here from the Russian Far East, will entertain the public in a 2,500-seat facility. The person making this statement needs a reality check. Do they honestly think that this pool by any means resembles the orca's real home from which they were violently kidnapped and sold into slavery? Certainly, they are not a family at all. They are literally orca children. Eight-year-old Narnia, six-year-old Nord, and four-year-old Malishka, cut off from their families and separated from their mothers. In April 2015, the Moscow-based activist group Killer Whale Friends attempted to deliver the Free Narnia and Nord petition to the owners of the orcas, but the owners refused to meet the petitioners. 
Zara Iliev and Gold Nisanov didn't show up today, but we were really hoping to see them. We want these orcas to be set free and return to their families. We want the shows with orcas and dolphins in Russia to be banned. Narnia, Nord, and Malishka are being held at the Moss Aquarium at the All-Russian Exhibition Center in Moscow from December 2014 to the present, July 2015. Moss Aquarium is the new name of the Oceanarium, and it's still under construction, so the orcas are not on public display yet. But can you imagine how these acoustically sensitive animals can survive surrounded by the din of construction for six months? We wonder why such excessive secrecy has continually surrounded the orcas in Moscow. The Oceanarium owners were going to tell about the killer whales at the moment the Oceanarium is opened. It is hard to believe that it's because a pleasant surprise for the public is planned. Most likely the secrecy was needed because the owners were not sure that orcas would survive the horrors and trauma of being captured, imprisoned in a small sea pen in the Russian Far East, the very long transport to Moscow, then living for a long time in small rusty tanks and finally the terrifying sounds of the construction of their new prison. If any of these animals died, their slave masters would have a chance to replace them quietly without any noise. This seems to be the only reasonable explanation of the vast secrecy. What is the future of the Moscow orcas? It's not difficult to predict. They will go through the same rings of hell as the other 50 or so orcas in captivity elsewhere around the world. Orcas, who are among the most intelligent animal species in the world, will be forced to perform tricks for public amusement and the generation of profits for their slave masters. They will be held for their entire life in tanks, filled with their excrement and chemicals to reduce harm from their feces, and to make the water appear crystal clear and blue. They will inscribe endless circles in their small and shallow tank, whereas in the wild they swim up to 100 miles a day and dive to depths of 500 feet. They will be medicated with antibiotics and antidepressants to prevent their death and the loss of their sanity. Orcas in the wild have an average life expectancy similar to humans, but orcas in captivity only 10 to 20 years. One of the most visual handicaps seen on captive orcas is a collapsed dorsal fin. It is seen in 100% of captive males, which results from the conditions of their captivity. Nord's dorsal fin will collapse soon and he will become more unstable and aggressive as he nears sexual maturity, although aggression toward humans and among orcas is nearly non-existent in nature. It is only a matter of time before these captive orcas will become aggressive and dangerous, just like Tilikum, who killed three people. How do we stop this tragedy? Please say no to orca and dolphin shows by refusing to buy a ticket, spread the word, sign the petitions requesting the release of these orcas, and support the ban on the capture of wild killer whales in Russia. These Moscow orcas are still young and have a chance to forget all these horrors if they can go home to their pods and their mothers. Cetaceans have larger and possibly more complex brains than humans. They are self-aware and deserve to live a better life. They have the right to be free and it is our obligation as humans to make that happen. <laughs>